yes. local library. Thank and you. now we're going to head over to the other side of the studio where Kimmy is joined by our next guest. That's right, Rachel West of hey. Eating the Ozarks, our favorite foragers here. And you've been foraging, I can tell. <laughs> How are so, you? So good. good. Fantastic. Good. It's winter, so... Mm -hmm. Um, there's so much abundance right now that my ADHD almost had a hard time deciding what I was bringing in. See, that's and funny because so, most of us are not seeing abundance when we look out. We are seeing the dead trees or dormant trees out there. You well, see abundance. I do, especially because I uh, love to seek out those invasive plants that right now when everything else is dormant, it is so easy that pretty much if you see something that's green outside right now, um, it's either an evergreen or it's an invasive and most of them are edible and so uh, it's a really invasive. easy time to forage. <laughs> it's like you can just walk over and be like, oh, I see a patch of garlic mustard over there and there's my onions and I'm not having to find them around all of those other natives. And if we don't are... know those things, we can always get her book to help us identify those things. Right? What's your book called again? Uh, Wild Forage. Yes, make sure you check that out. That's a good Christmas gift. Okay. So, uh, so what soft. I thought of was, okay, everybody's just gotten uh, out of Thanksgiving and there's so many, my son's had a call for days um, and so I thought of I thought uh, mullen would be the perfect thing to bring in uh, mullen is an expectorant and so it, it naturally will help you uh, with a cough so there's two ways to use this plant and there's a lot of ways to use a plant but you would use it as a tea a tincture um, and, or you could technically smoke it, and smoking it would be like in a pipe. And so, obviously, I'm like not going to recommend that okay, to kids. Okay, okay, I thought you meant like in a smoker, but it, no, you're... So, I would take it as a tea, so I would just mm -hmm. tear up leaves, put it in water, let it simmer? Uh, so, you would just pour boiling water over it, like uh -huh. you were going to steep it for a tea? Okay. Um, these little fine hairs, let me give you a, a leaf. So, it is an antispasmoidic. So, the reason I was mentioning Spasmos. smoking was uh, if you have somebody who has asthma attacks or anything like that, mm -hmm. instead of in the replacement of an inhaler, they could have the, ingest the inhalation of the smoke. So, it doesn't have to necessarily only be in a pipe. You could technically put this in a fire pit and then breathe in the smoke. So interesting. Um, but if you've got a bunch of mucus or uh -huh. buildup like that, yeah. Yeah. This is supposed to help break that up. It's like nature's mucinex. A hundred percent. And so, and then it's also uh, antibacterial, um, helping with staph infections and the flu. Staph. Okay, and that's a viral, so, so it's antiviral as well. So antibacterial, antiviral, and anti-inflammatory. How would so you it's gonna use open it for those, something like that? Like if what? you had an infection, how would um, you use I would it? do a tea. Okay. I would, yeah. For sure. Um, I would drink tea every day, and that's what I've been trying to mix in, and I have to add, because it, here, smell a leaf. Yeah. It's got the smell of a radish and black pepper. I don't know how yeah. to describe it, but it's very earthy and kind of spicy, I mean, and so I have to add uh, honey or maple syrup. Okay. I mean, it kind of just smells my... like salad to me, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's um and so it's not it's not a salad green guys. This okay. is a medicinal herb. That would kind of and taste so a bit yeah. that, that hair on So it. if you yeah. are wanting to make it as a tea, you would want to pour it through a sieve or even a coffee filter. If you just have a regular just white coffee filter, pouring it through and just letting it drip will get all those little hairs out. Mm. Um, this plant uh, is also a really great land healer. So I actually brought it in looking all messy. If you guys can see online that underneath though, all these yellow leaves, can you count how many, Cami? There's like eight, 10 of these brown leaves that are all underneath it. Okay. And so the cool thing about mullen is as it grows in the ground, it'll grow in disturbed soil. So you'll see this in your edge rows. You'll see it in a parking lot. It has a nice long deep taproot. Now granted, I, I cut off this taproot uh, in my harvesting and didn't want to, since okay. I'm not using it for tincturing. Is that, oh, so are we looking at the same thing? Yeah, again? so this is, that's a second year. So they okay. form a rosette in their first year, and uh -huh. then in their second year, they'll send out that stock. So the flowers on that second stock are also, um, they're antifungal and used for ear infections or athlete's foot and things wow. like that. But the coolest thing is if you have this in an area of your yard and you allow it to grow, not only do you have that medicine there in the corner, all of this that I just like kind of ripped out and made uh -huh. your counter uh -huh. beautiful and luxurious <laughs> here. This is breaking down this plant matter and will end up building the soil. So oh. it's actually healing the soil underneath because the leaves are dying and helping all right. keep all that moisture What is in. the name of this again? Mullen. And how do we find you online? Eatingtheozarks.com. She always has great events. You've got to check them out. And her book, it'd be a perfect Christmas gift. It'd be perfect Christmas gift. All right, coming up, we'll try